Hello, <coughs> hello everyone. Thank you for for, for my uh, introduction. So, I was so nervous before my first DevCon talk that um, I prepared 62 slides for this 20 minutes talk. We will try to manage it. So, we'll talk about prototype pollution vulnerabilities in JavaScript. Um, this talk is based on the joint work with Musart Balio uh, and Chris Tycoon. In this paper, we study prototype pollution vulnerabilities uh, and their gadget and implemented to, uh, the tools to detect them. Uh, I already presented part of this talk, uh, the exploits that we detected in the real application and details of the gadget on uh, Black Hat Asia. Uh, and today I want to present more details about our methodolo methodology, about uh, the tools. Uh, and we, uh, let's start with uh, some introduction in uh, JavaScript and uh, how in inheritance work in JavaScript through an example. So we run Node.js uh, which executes um, th uh, uh, the code in uh, index file. The first line of the code creates an empty JavaScript object. The runtime allocates a new object with the built-in property proto that points to the object prototype. The object prototype has a bunch of functions that we can reuse, for example, to string. To implement inheritance, JavaScript allows to extend a prototype with a new property. In this example, we define the property x with value 42. Uh, things get more interesting when we create some other object, in principle unrelated from the first one. Both objects share the same prototype. When the runtime uh, executes the last line of the code to print X property for the second um, object, it tries to find prototype in the object itself. Since X is undefined, for the second object, the runtime will look up the property X in the prototype. In this case, uh, it prints 42 to the terminal. Well, let's consider the thread model of web applications to see how this feature can affect uh, security properties of the application. Index.js file creates a simple web app that handles two requests, update and backup. The attacker in our threat model can send any request to the server, for example, update with any parameters. Let's see what happens when the parameters are in this figure. The code creates an empty object. It reads proto property. And then the attacker adds uh, the property shell uh, with the value calc to object prototype. On this, so this code pattern is called prototype pollution vulnerability. But how can it affect our application? Let's assume that this code handler handles backup request. It just executes backup script by the helper function. Notice that the attacker cannot control any arguments of this helper function. In this function, we can give some options in terms of which shell you want to use. Uh, if we don't specify this option, it will use the default shell. And then uh, it will run a new process. If the attacker sends backup request after prototype pollution, we execute the function and options dot shell reads the attacker controlled property from the prototype and runs the calculator. So we get remote code execution and this code fragments uh, call it prototype pollution gadget. If you find gadget in the code of Node.js itself, the impact is much higher because it potentially affect of all applications. In summary, to achieve remote code execution, we need two steps, identifying prototype pollution and identifying gadgets. 
how to identify prototype pollution at scale. We implemented static analysis for Node.js applications and uh, NPM packages. We use stained analysis where we mark the attacker controller data by the input uh, label. Uh, however, we cannot define the thing syntactically because not every property assigned, uh, uh, not, prop uh, not every pro property assignment uh, leads to prototype pollution. Instead, we use uh, what we call multi-label paint analysis to find the sync. Let's see how it looks uh, at this example. We assume that all arguments uh, of the function are attacker controlled uh, and mark uh, them by input label. We propagate the input label and if we have a property read with the tainted property name, we change the prototype to proto. It means attacker can potentially read pro, uh, object prototype uh, here. When the analysis detects the property assignment with receiver that has a proto label, like this one, it reports the code fragment as potential prototype pollution vulnerability. This is the main idea of our analysis. We implemented it based on the code QL um, ana analysis framework. Uh, and uh, evaluated uh, our analysis on 100 vulnerable packages uh, that we collected. The best result achieves 97% recall. It means we uh, detected 97 uh, vulnerabilities out of 100. And uh, which is necessary to find vulnerabilities in the real applications. The second question is how to identify the gadgets. We analyzed Node.js code um, and uh, used dynamic analysis uh, to detect property reads from object prototype. Uh, then we used static analysis to find flows from these properties to internal Node.js function calls. You can find all details of this analysis in the paper. In presentation, I want to show some interesting results. So we detected 11 different gadgets in Node.js APIs. The first gadget is spawn function which executes new process. Uh, let's look at this code. Details is not important uh, here, but we see that uh, the property shell and the property env can be uh, undefined. And there is a flow from these properties to the internal function call, uh, which is actually vulnerable. It's simplified version of um, spawn function from Node.js API implementation. Let's see how remote code execution can be achieved. Suppose that the backup handler calls spawn with no attacker controlled arguments. The attacker first pollute the prototype by update request, as we saw earlier. They add property shell with value node to object prototype. The property env by another request. And send backup request to execute spawn function. Let's see what happens. When spawn executes, it reads uh, the value of the shell and env from the prototype. It allows the attacker to run Node.js in debugging mode by controlling environment variables and connect remotely to execute arbitrary code. For this, we implemented uh, the shell based on Node.js uh, remote debugging protocol. Uh, you can see the short demo on the slide. The second gadget is the require function. The require function is used to include external packages to an application. So each application uh, has a lot required calls. Um, this is a simplified snippet of a require function. As we can see, it reads a package configuration file, package JSON, and evaluates the entry point uh, if this is defined in the property main. If main is undefined, Node.js uses a default value. Let's see how we can exploit it if the attacker pollutes the main property. 
And to exploit the gadget, we need a require function call for a package without the main property defined. An example of uh, such um, a gadget is Bytes, one of the popular gadgets in NPM um, ecosystem. Let's see how it works when the attacker triggers this code to execute the re uh, require call. The attacker triggers the backup handler, which parses a config file of byte package. Since the main property is undefined, it looks up uh, the property from the prototype. To achieve remote code execution, attacker should control this malicious file. As you can guess, this is a strong requirement as the attacker should be able to upload some malicious file to the system, for example, using some another vulnerability. Let's see how we can bypass this limitation by combining these two gadgets. The key idea is to use require gadget to trigger the spawn gadget. To achieve this, we need to find the existing file that execute spawn function. If we identify a file in Node.js default distribution, then we increase the impact of uh, the exploit because every application uh, use Node.js already have uh, this file. An example of such a file is npm.js, which uh, runs Node instance. Let's look at the end-to-end -end, uh, exploit. The attacker pollutes the main property with the path to npm.js, and the end property as required uh, by spawn gadget. Finally, when backup is triggered, uh, Node.js uh, executes the require function loads npm.js that calls spawn function. The spawn function reads the attacker controlled environment variable from the prototype and runs node.js in debugging mode as we saw earlier. So the attacker achieve remote code execution for require call without additional requirements. The last question is how to exploit real application using or tools and detected gadgets. Uh, we have uh, the GitHub uh, for Node.js applications and took 15 uh, most popular ones. We ran our tool and got some prototype pollution cases. As you can see, the prototype pollution pattern is rare in practice and manual verification is applicable for the total number of detected cases. We confirmed eight detected cases uh, as exploitable and reported them to maintainers. You can see we found two cases in NPM CLI. Everyone I think used this app, uh, packet, uh, parse server and uh, rocket chat uh, messenger. The main problem with um, real exploitation of this um, vulnerability to achieve remote code execution, it's uh, that code of, um, uh, so, some code of the application can break your application if you pollute object prototype. So the code does not expect any additional properties in the object prototype. Uh, it happened many times uh, in these experiments and I want to show one technique that I used um, and that you can also mm, apply for your research. Let's see a case for parse server. We have a parse server. It's a server that provides REST API out of the box and use some database. For example, MongoDB to store a data from the request. Uh, it also uses uh, JSB son it's a library of the MongoDB that uh, can serialize and deserialize the data to binary MongoDB format. So we detected prototype pollution case in parse server. Uh, this example of the code details is not interesting. Uh, what's uh, it's not important. What's um, actually important for us that attacker can control uh, name and uh, the value of uh, the polluted property. Uh, 
We also detected a gadget in JS Bison um, package. And this gadget can be triggered when JS Bison deserialized some data from the MongoDB. So, this gadget calls evolve function for function string from the MongoDB that attacker can store uh, to the MongoDB before. Uh, but the problem that this eval call executed uh, only if eval function option is enabled. As you can guess, it's disabled by default in the configuration file. But it can be uh, polluted uh, and the gadget reads from the polluted prototype and we can enable this feature in runtime. This is the main idea. So, let's see on the naive way how we can exploit it. Attacker first sent a package that should trigger prototype pollution vulnerability. The package uh, serializes it to the MongoDB, uh, response deserializes it, and trigger prototype pollution. Good. We pollute uh, the option that we need to trigger a gadget. After that, the attacker sent a package that should trigger a gadget, but serializer of JavaScript Bison library throws an excep exception, and application crashed. It looks like unexploitable case. We cannot send any request after prototype pollution. Application crashed after the first request that we try to send. How we can bypass it? I found a way, some kind of race condition. Let's see. If the attacker sent the package that trigger remote code execution gadget first, this package um, serialize it and MongoDB start to handle it for the some long time. At this moment the attacker sent second gadget that should trigger prototype pollution vulnerability. It's serialized it and deserialized it from the MongoDB and successfully trigger prototype pollution. After that MongoDB decided to stop handling the, uh, the first request and uh, pass it to the application and we trigger remote code execution. This technique I used many times. Usually you need a very short uh, time gap to trigger uh, remote code execution gadget. One of the techniques that I use, I just sent um, like 20, 50 requests to trigger remote code execution and one request that trigger prototype pollution in the middle. Most likely we get some situation that we trigger remote code execution uh, exactly after prototype pollution in the some thread. Okay, and let's see how it looks in, in practice, some short demo. We are on parse server, we need to implement a, scri a script to, um, to exploit this vulnerability because uh, the second request we need to send in uh, 100, 300 milliseconds after the first one. So it's not possible to do manually. Uh, so this script prepared database to add some data to MongoDB to make it a little bit slower to handle the first request for the long time and send these two um, requests. And you can see that we get calculator uh, from the parse server. So it works. So, in conclusion, uh, we implemented and open sourced uh, tools to detect prototype pollution vulnerabilities and their gadget. Uh, detected 11 new gadget in Node.js APIs. You also can find them uh, in the GitHub repo. Uh, some gadgets already fixed it, but not all combination of that. And we reported eight uh, remote code execution um, vulnerabilities in the popular open source applications. So the interesting question for the future work, one of that, what is the more efficient way to detect gadget? So we have options like a static analysis, dynamic analysis, we already use some hybrid approach. I think it's a good question for the future research. How many new gadget in uh, NPM packages. We did not consider in this research NPM packages, but it's also a large uh, surface for the gadget. How many new gadget in Node.js APIs source code? If we find some efficient way to 
to detect it, to explore it, probably we can find some new ones. We continue research in this direction. If you're interested um, in this, just follow me in the Twitter. And thank you for your attention. <laughs>